The good shepherd gives his life for his sheep. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Ghost. Amen. What's well, obvious from reading today's gospel that the good shepherd is our Lord himself. Now, St. Gregory tells us that Christ is the good shepherd who gives his life that he may feed his sheep with his body and with his blood. Now, this is an obvious reference to the Blessed Sacrament because our Lord literally gave us his life in his crucifixion and death, and he also gave us his body and his blood at the Last Supper, which is actually all one event, which you so clearly see at the sacrifice of the Mass. And so our Lord is the first good shepherd. But then when our Lord ascended to heaven... Because he would no longer be with us, he put someone in charge because he didn't want his flock to be without a shepherd. St. Leo tells us, It was in those days that the Holy Ghost was bestowed upon all the apostles by our Lord's breathing upon them, and that the blessed apostle Peter, raised above the rest, having already received the keys of the kingdom, saw the care of the Lord's flock committed to his charge. Close quote, St. Leo the Great. This was the first step to establishing his church, putting someone in charge. So God raised up a good shepherd in St. Peter, not only because he was the first pope, but also because St. Peter gave his life for his sheep also, just like our Lord said was the, was the prerequisite for a good shepherd. Now, our Lord, while he walked the earth, he singled out St. Peter to be the first shepherd when he said, Thou art Peter, and upon this rock I will build my church. And so our Lord definitely came to establish a church and a leader or a shepherd of that church, and that was St. Peter. Now, his duty is to ensure that the faith is established under one religion here on earth so that there is no confusion for us because it's our duty to get to heaven. The duty of the papacy is to ensure that the faith is taught correctly and passed on uncorrupted and spread throughout the world. And so our Lord gave the Grand Commission to ensure that it happened. And that Grand Commission is, go and teach all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Ghost. It was a serious command that God gave the world, especially St. Peter and the Apostles. Now remember when our Lord tells St. Peter, do you love me? And what is our Lord's remedy for this? He says, feed my sheep. So if you love me, you will feed my sheep. Now, what does our Lord mean by feed my sheep? Well, the faith is our food, so to speak. And so our Lord is talking about passing on the faith by teaching and by preserving it. He is to feed us by giving us the faith and to make sure that it stays uncorrupt throughout the centuries so that it stands the test of time. Because that's one of the things about our faith. It's incorruptible. Truth can't change. It's that simple. And so the duty of the papacy is to make sure that that gets passed on without changing. And of course, there has to be clarifications over the centuries. That's absolutely true. And so just as our Lord, the true and original Good Shepherd, gave us his body and blood, St. Peter, the first Pope and Good Shepherd chosen by God, passes on the faith to us. This is how he feeds his and our Lord's sheep, since they're one and the same. And of course, he, like the original Good Shepherd, gave his life for his sheep. Now, St. Peter was made the head of the church and the chief teacher by our Lord himself while he walked the earth. When our Lord said to St. Peter, I will give you the keys to the kingdom of heaven, he clearly meant, I give you the supreme authority over my church, That's what he's telling St. Peter. And that means not just St. Peter, but to the papacy. And our Lord said to all the apostles, Receive the Holy Spirit. Whose sins you shall forgive, they are forgiven them. Whose sins you shall retain, they are retained. But to Peter alone did our Lord say, I will give you the keys of the kingdom. Now here the keys are a symbol of authority. Whoever lawfully carries the keys to a building has the right himself to enter into that and to ensure who goes in and to guard who goes out. The man who owns the keys has that right because he has that authority. 
This is what St. Peter has. He has the keys. He has the keys to opening and to closing. Now, the true test of loyalty to Christ is not only to believe in Him and worship Him, but also to honor and to obey the representatives that He has chosen. It's rebellion against our Lord to say, I will worship you, but I will not recognize your representative. This is what we do when we deny the authority of the successor of St. Peter. Now, Christ also gave St. Peter special marks of distinction, that is, things that tell him apart from the other apostles that weren't given to them. Now, first of all, our Lord gave St. Peter a new name. Now, in Scripture, there's only three men in all of Scripture whose names were changed. The first was Abram, whose name was changed to Abraham, since he was to be the father of many. The second was Jacob, whose name was changed to Israel, because he would be the father of many nations. And then finally, Simon, whose name was changed to Peter, because now he would be the holy father of the spiritual kingdom. And so he would be the father of many through that. And that's why we refer to the Pope as the Holy Father, because he is a father in the same category. But he's the only one of the apostles that our Lord gave that. So he is the head of the apostles and the head of the church. Now, we also chose St. Peter as a companion on the very solemn occasions, such as the Transfiguration. Our Lord chose St. Peter. And also in the Garden of Gethsemane, our Lord chose St. Peter. After the resurrection, our Lord appeared to St. Peter first. Peter is always the first of the apostles, and Judas is always listed as last. See, Matthew even calls St. Peter the first apostle. Now, it's funny, St. Peter isn't actually the oldest apostle, but he's still referred to as the first apostle. And he also wasn't the first one chosen, because we know that his brother St. Andrew was chosen before him. So we look at this and say, well, what does he mean by first apostle? Well, it's obviously because he's the first in honor and the first in authority. So this is an argument that you can use, you know, for any Protestants that might come up to you and tell you that St. Peter isn't the head of the church and the church wasn't founded under him. But our Lord also promised to remain for all time with the church that he had established. That's why we are called the mystical body of Christ. It's the body of Christ in the world. This body doesn't change. It is one body from the beginning of when our Lord established it now till the end of time. This body can't change. So we can't protest against this body and we can't separate ourselves from it. Remember, our Lord founded a church to lead all men to salvation. This is the means to heaven. Our Lord established this church in order to lead us to heaven. God isn't divided. He revealed only one religion. He didn't reveal many religions and say, these are all ways that you can get to heaven. There's only one way to heaven. Christ suffered and died for that very reason, to give us that one church to get us into heaven. So if it was so important to him to shed his blood for it, we should realize the importance of this one church. He revealed only one religion. We either believe that religion or we don't. There's no halfway on this one. Our Lord said, He who is not with me is against me. Anything that isn't the whole truth isn't truth. If it's a half-truth, then it's a lie because it's not entirely true. All religions except the Catholic Church are false religions. Remember the words of Christ, who said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father but through me. Now, the reason why our Lord established this one church is to make it easy for us to get to heaven. Remember, he is the good shepherd. He is trying to get his flock to heaven. You see, God loves us, and he wants us to get to heaven. But most importantly, he doesn't want us to be confused about the way to get to heaven. He wants to make it very clear for us. Now, after Adam and Eve fell, we were all destined to hell, and there was no possibility for any of us to get to heaven. And the gates of heaven were closed to us. St. Paul tells us we were born children of wrath. But God, because he is a good shepherd, he promised a Savior to come from a certain bloodline, from the Jews, and that's how we'll recognize the Christ. Because then in that, in that bloodline, God would reveal that he would come into the world through a certain woman, at a certain time, through a certain line. So from Adam to Christ... 
This religion was preserved by the patriarchs, the prophets, and others chosen by God to lead them. But then when Christ came and died for us, the old law was abrogated. That, mean, that means it was done away and it was superseded. It was superseded by the new law given to us by our Lord himself and the new church which Christ established here. Now, of course, in this we see that the Jewish religion was actually fulfilled with the Catholic Church. Once the Catholic Church was started and Christ established his religion, that should have been the end of the Jewish religion. The Jewish religion should have ended at that point. But those that continue in that are now in a position of rejecting Christ because Christ came to establish one church. But later on, after Christ established that one church, many would protest against this. Lutherans, Anglicans, Calvinists, and all the other 10,000 denominations that are out there of Protestants, they're all false religions that broke off from the one way that God gave us to get to heaven. The Catholic Church is the one true church and the sheepfold of Christ, and that's why he's the good shepherd. Because Christ died to give us his church. It's absurd to suppose that after God died this way, he would suppose that men could denounce his son as an imposter and a blasphemer or worship him as God or even attack his blessed mother and the papacy, which he established himself. It's ridiculous to think these things because Christ came to establish one church. He didn't leave us orphans. He loves us and he gave the world a plan for salvation because he is the good shepherd. So today, Good Shepherd Sunday, we honor Christ, our Lord's generosity, and his love for us, having saved us from this awful dilemma. We should give thanks to God for the coming of the Good Shepherd, for being in the one true Catholic Church, who by coming into this world to die for our sins, he brought us the Catholic Church, through which is the only means that we have to get into heaven. And this Good Shepherd gave us another Good Shepherd, St. Peter, to guide us in his absence. St. Peter gave his life for the faith, and he himself tells us to imitate the Good Shepherd. This is the same Shepherd who he points, points to the one true church and who he points to in the Acts of the Apostles, and he teaches us. He says, There is no other name under heaven given to men whereby we must be saved. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Ghost. Amen.